Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I have for you the Savivi Knives Lazar. This is an Elijah Isham design, and it comes in at $60. Lazar is kind of, it's just a big brother of his McKenna model. You know, you have that similar uh, thinness toward the knife, and um, just a cool design overall. But let's get some specs out of the way so you can have an idea of how big this knife is. You have a total length of 7.58 inches. You have a blade length of 3.31 inches. So it's going to be in that medium size range. You have a grip area from right here to here of 3.5 inches. You have a handle scale thickness of 0.48 inches. So it's in that thin side. You have a closed width in the pocket from here to here. Uh, 0.92 inches once again uh, in thin in this dimension as well and you have a blade stock thickness of 0.12 inches <clears throat> this is using their 10 CR 15 steel which is a uh, Chinese equivalent to uh, VG 10 all right before we go any further let's do some cutting with this and see how well it does all right we're gonna start out cutting some cardboard uh, this is the factory sharpness It's sharp, not the sharpest I've ever used. All right, uh, I was pretty impressed. It was performing very well. Glad to this. See how well the edge is holding up. My hands just cramping up. It's hard for me to hold that cardboard. Been testing a lot of knives today. Nah, hold on. Yeah, it's still sharp. All right, we're gonna cut up some half-inch twisted sisal rope. We're gonna shoot for 20 cuts, but I could already tell with that skinny handle, it might be a little difficult. All right, we're gonna stop there. Um, the edge didn't come super sharp to me, and it's just gliding, skating off this um, rope. I think it's mainly because they might have over buffed it, maybe. I don't know, maybe I'll sharpen this one up and get the test going again. All right, we're gonna test the ergos and see how well this edge is biting on this pond two by four. We start out lightly and then start digging into it a little bit harder. All right, there we go. Um, uh, that that belly is pretty much, you know, it's a lot of belly, maybe all belly. Um, and it kept wanting to slide out of the cut, so I had to make sure I was following the cut into the wood. Um, the handle being as skinny as it is in this dimension is, is not the best for doing those type of pressure cuts because it wants to twist in your hand. My forearms are all you know, knotted up right now. And I did feel the back side of this clip being all the way up to the top like that, just whenever I was really bearing down. Uh, wasn't, it wasn't terrible. Uh, overall, the edge is just a little lackluster. So I probably need to touch that up. 
Alrighty, sorry I had to kind of cut that one short, but it just wasn't performing that great. Uh, definitely needs to be uh, sharpened fully uh, to give it a little bit more bite. But let's take a closer look at this. You have a nice trailing point blade with a blasted stone wash finish. Uh, this side of the blade is completely sterile. You have a full flat grind as you can see. Turn it over, you have Elijah Isham's maker, Maker's Mark. I think it's pretty darn cool right there. And also the blade steel designation. Let's see, that 10CR, I don't know why my camera's acting up. 10CR 15 COMOV. Like I said uh, before, that is the uh, Chinese equivalent to VG10 steel. Um, <coughs> The, the grind is nice and thin, and, uh, you know, it, cutting in the wood, it wasn't biting really well, but, it, you know, I could tell that it was slicing well. It sliced very well through the cardboard because of its thin geometry. Uh, this blade is ground to 15 thousandths at the thinnest portion, so that's nice and thin, uh, especially having a full flat grind, so it's tapering all the way down to that nice thin edge. Um, this blade hole is completely aesthetic only. Close it up. You have a nice uh, front flipping action. You got a uh, protruding tang right here with some nice fine jimping. They do a great job of that. The action is nice. It's riding on ceramic bearings and a ceramic ball detent. And uh, the detent's dialed in uh, very nice for that front, front flipping action. You can either front flip it or two hand deploy it. That's your two means of opening the knife. <coughs> uh, look at the scales. You have peel plied black G10 on this one. There is other variations. Um, you just check out one of your main uh, knife retailers to see that. You have the Civivi branded pivot right here. You have a Torx T8 body screw right here and a Torx T8 pivot screw. Nice and crisp um, Torx heads right there, Torx fasteners. You have a deep carry tip up left or right hand pocket clip. Uh, clip screws have been recessed. It goes in and out of the pocket nicely. Let's show that really quick. And uh, the knife really hugs this side of the pants, so you don't have any flipper tab or anything getting in the way of your hands, if that means anything to you. And that's how much of the knife is sticking up out of the pocket. Not much at all. <clears throat> you have no, no lanyard hole on this one. You have a just a small black G10 backspacer. Pretty much flow through construction, so if you need to blow that out with some compressed air, put a Q-tip in there to clean out any gunk, you can do that easily. Uh, let me shed some light in there. You have some nice internal milling up top right here on the show side scale. You got one pocket down below as well, and uh, I think that's it. But the knife is nice and lightweight. Let's check out the weight really quick. First in grams, 74.3 grams, and 2.62 ounces. So yeah, it's a complete featherweight. It's a good um, basketball short shorts type of knife. It's gonna it's gonna uh, leave little to no footprint in the pocket, and that's what's appealing to me about this knife. <clears throat> Uh, your access to the lock bar is okay. Um, you do have some jimps on there for some traction. Uh, you can do it like that. I find it to be more comfortable, once again, to use the fat of my thumb right there and just push it over. Just easier for me. Your lock up is about 40%. You have absolutely no up and down. And I can flex side to side, but I'm not getting any side to side play. Flex just means I'm actually, you know, being how thin these uh, liners are and, and scales, I can muscle some flex into the blade. It's not really an issue. And this type of knife, you shouldn't be doing any crazy hard use with it anyway. <clears throat> uh, let's get some size comparisons out of the way and we're going to do some nitpicks complaints. 
Uh, first up, you have your Ontario Rat Model 1. Let's see, let me back out a little bit just for that one. Yeah, I know it got blurry, but I'm about to back it up. And much closer to the uh, Rat Model 2, as you can see. All right. And I was trying to find some, some slender knives to uh, pair this with. So I grabbed a few. You got one that I've been enjoying here lately. I've been testing this one. This is the Kaiser Knives Splinter. This is the uh, one that Mojave Outdoor sent me. These two are really, really good size comparisons. The uh, Lazar is just a hair longer, but uh, as far as slenderness, very, very good uh, comparison right there. And here's the Real Steel Compact Metaphor Metamorph. So you can see Lazar is bigger. And two more, you have your Tucson Grandpa, I think it's called. Uh, these two are pretty close in size as well. The Grandpa is a little bit longer, but also nice and slender design. Another nice slender design is the CJRB Rhea. But as you can see, it's a good bit bigger than the Rhea. And if I didn't show it earlier, which I'm pretty sure I did, here it is between his little brother, the McKenna, the Savivi McKenna. So you can see the size difference there. <clears throat> All right, so nitpicks complaints. Well, first off, um, the blasted stone wash finish, it's going to show wear really quick. You can see the wear marks already from the, the little bit of cutting that I did with this. Um, just the nature of the beast, not the biggest deal. I don't really care, but you know, if you're one that cares about the way your blade looks after you cut and something, you know, the only way to fix that is to do a, either a nice satin finish or my preference, a nice stone wash finish. Uh, next up is going to be the out of box, uh, sharpness. They're, they must be uh, they must be hitting these on a buffer and they're just I've had this happen before with some Civivis is just over buffed which means it like if I if I got if I had some paper right now and I'll let's see it's still sharp it's sharp to cut paper but whenever you try to bite into something like wood rope especially rope if you want to see if your knife has bite let's see well maybe not might not have anything left to it let's see. Oh. Yeah. This edge is pretty pretty done. Yeah, the edge just came pretty bad. Uh, so if you want to see if your knife has bite, cut some sisal, twisted sisal rope, and uh, if that edge just slides off of it like it's uh, glass or something, then there's no bite to your edge. Your edge is either dull or it's lacking its... Uh, teeth from over sharpening over polishing So I'm guessing that's what the problem was here because it did great on the cardboard and I've tested some of their 10 CR and it's good stuff uh, And let's see me personally uh, Rather than the 10 CR that's pretty much VG 10 I would have much rather see nitro V steel which they use a lot now 154 CM would have been an excellent choice I just don't love the steel. I don't I like their 9CR, especially because they don't, you know, the price isn't, you know, that much, you know, it's, it's a lot lower usually. And last, but certainly not least, the placement on this clip, and I know it's to save cost because you already had a screw right here. So they just added another screw, tapped it, and called it a day. But being that high up like that, as you can see, it's literally sitting on the top of the scale. So in normal, just, you know, breaking down boxes and, you know, light duty tasks like that, it won't be an issue. But as soon as I started <laughs> uh, pushing into that wood, the top of that clip started uh, giving me a minor hot spot on the top of my hands. Now, it wasn't terrible. I could have done it for a little while, but, you know, longer periods of time, I would have probably wanted to put a glove on. So... That's my thoughts so far on the knife. <laughs> uh, 
I may sharpen it up and do another video later on. I don't know yet. Depends on how busy I am. But overall, I, I like the aesthetic of the knife. I like the thin profile. Uh, $60. It's not terrible. Um, I think they have some better, better designs at that price point. But, you know, if you like the design, you like the 10CR steel, then I say go for it. Um, I wouldn't worry so much about the clip being up here because it only bothered me whenever I really, really put some force into it. And when you have a knife like this, sleek, you know, design, kind of like a gentleman's carry type almost, you're usually not doing that kind of stuff with it anyway. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.